in its latest manifestation, the MimeNet generates a world where video games and simulators cross the boundaries between the Pentagon, the defense industry, Hollywood, and the commercial gaming sector. And given that the gaming industry as a market is way more lucrative today than the ordinary film industry, this development is important. Let's have a look at some examples of the type of collaboration between the military and the gaming industry. In the 1990s, Sega developed simulator software for Lockheed Martin. Lockheed manufactured chips for Sega game modules. Lockheed sold its simulator to the Pentagon. In 1994, Sega adapted the Lockheed Martin simulator for commercial release and named it Desert Tank. Or, the Pentagon commissioned the design of a simulator to train foot soldiers. The result was Full Spectrum Warrior, which was eventually released by THQ for Xbox and PS2 in 2004. So here we see how the cutting-edge use and production of military simulators follows the path from military use to private consumption on home consoles and PCs. That's how the average citizen comes to play games such as Full Spectrum Warrior. But, as Roger Stahl points out, the process also works the other way around. In terms of a lot of technologies, we usually consider the military to be kind of at the forefront, or the tip of the spear in terms of technological development, and that, that these technologies kind of migrate eventually to the civilian sphere, where we find them in our homes. But this really isn't the case in, in terms of video games. The commercial sphere has been a lot more technologically advanced, especially in terms of software, than the uh, military game or simulator development sector. Um, so the military, for the most part, has looked to civilian games, commercial games, for their training purposes. And you know, probably the, the first instance of this when uh, this, uh, the military started appropriating commercial games for training simulators was in the case of Doom, which was one of the first first-person shooters, uh, 3D simulated environments. Um, which worked very well for military training. And so the Marines got a hold of it at first. Um, it was seen as sort of a silly idea, but then it really uh, got its footing and was uh, retrofitted, what they call uh, modified or modded, uh, to be able to train Marines in uh, simulated combat situations, what they called Marine Doom. And other games have been appropriated uh, in the same way. Uh, Tom Clancy's Rogue Spear, uh, Black Thorn, was one of these games that was then imported into the Army for use for training purposes, uh, but retrofitted with um, features in the game that um, were more appropriate for um, military training. So a large purpose of today's MimeNet is to facilitate the training of soldiers through simulations. And simulations are crucial in military training and decision making, something that militaries have done for decades. But since the 1990s, military use of simulators has undergone a revolution. Whereas computer training used to be limited to large and expensive shooting range, flight and tank simulators, oftentimes costing a quarter of a million dollars, now simulators have penetrated almost every aspect of training with the help of consoles and PCs. But it is important to remember that in the midst of this revolution, the older forms of simulators have not disappeared. We still see the military build vast physical training sets. Let's look at an example. Near San Diego, a company called Strategic Operations merges the movie-making techniques of Hollywood with battlefield training. It immerses soldiers in what they call hyper-realism. By combining immigrant Middle Eastern role players with battlefield pyrotechnics and special effects makeup, strategic operations collapses the boundaries between the imaginary world of conflict and actual war. Another example is a controversial war game program called Human Terrain Systems. Facing long wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the US military had to change track. 
Training your soldiers in cultural awareness became a key element in the counterinsurgency strategy. So the military hired anthropologists and Hollywood set designers in the struggle for the hearts and minds of its enemies. It built an artificial urban environment in the Mojave Desert, hired exiled Iraqis as full-time actors, and embedded social scientists with combat troops. And while the human terrain systems quickly came under attack by academic critics, it nevertheless serves as a powerful example of the level of cooperation in today's MimeNet. Simulations and first-person shooter video games are designed to improve military training, to enhance decision-making, and to permit private citizens to replay war on their consoles at home. In its latest manifestation, the MimeNet propels us into a world where games and simulators cross the boundaries between militaries, the defense industry, Hollywood and the commercial gaming sector.